Shove it, man! <laughs> All right, it's the leader of the squad. Don't talk, just nod. Today is an episode of Ring of the Hawk Season 4, the show where we watch back a wrestler's short run with a company, and at the end we shove them the final grade to see if they can do the J.O.B. to the H.A.W.K. Today's video was also a Patreon request by Jacob Hogan. If you want to make the Hawk talk, sign up today. Okay, okay, it's Ludwig Borgar. From the look of him, it's a nah. Yeah, this is coming at you from 1993, and it's the run of a man who was a real-life fascist that WWE decided to push on an undefeated streak. I bet they regret this one. This is all legit. He even had a tattoo which he was forced to cover up, although apparently he didn't have it covered up for most of the early matches, but it's quite a small tattoo, I barely noticed it. Much more stuff would happen after his WWF career, so stick around for that. I have tried to keep his personal life separate from his actual wrestling, so bear that in mind. And his wrestling career didn't exactly start that great because he was over in Japan, but they forced him to leave when he got into a real fight with Scott Norton. Okay, let's get into it. Match 1, Superstars, Ludwig Borger. Okay, yeah, he looks like a complete nutcase. He enters to the Finnish National Anthem. He faces jobber Tony Demoro. Borger charges straight at the jobber and crushes him with a back suplex. Borger keeps screaming in Finnish. He hits a back elbow and flexes with happiness. His elbow drop only gets him a two count. The jobber has a chance now as Borger misses a splash in the corner. He clotheslines the Finnishman. Finman? Finn? Yeah, it's Finn. There's no need to grin. He does this a couple of times and celebrates way too soon. Borger smacks him down like a stack of bricks. Ludwig Borger wins with a pretty nice diving clothesline. Pretty interesting character presentation. He's quite animated and has a decent finisher. Let's see how this goes. The debut is a C. Match 2 Superstars Ludwig Borger vs. Jobber Mike Curry. Borger looks extra annoyed. He chokes Curry above his head and eventually slams him down to the mat. Borger picks him back up and sends him running into a press, into a Samoan drop which I am totally not okay with. Samoan drops should only be safe for Samoans and fat guys, and Borger is neither. Borger breaks up his own pin. He hits the slam with authority, but misses his elbow drop. Curry hits a drop kick, which Borger no-sells, and the jobber runs straight into a front slam. Again, Borger breaks his own pin up. This anti-American gimmick seems to be getting the right reaction from the crowd. The diving clothesline finisher looks even better this time. Really nice squash match, it improved on the last one. He attacked the jobber again after the bell, and the crowd are already booing him. This one's a B as far as early squash matches go. Match 3, Superstars. Ludwig Borger, who doesn't get an entrance, versus Virgil, who does. They lock up with Borger shoving Virgil over straight away. Virgil tries to work on his arm, but gets an elbow to the face. Another barge over. Virgil responds with stinging left jabs to the face. Again, Borger's no-selling and hits a shut up or I'll smack you one punch. Borg continues to beat down in the corner. Virgil's still fighting back though. None of his smacks can take Borger off his feet. Virgil lands two drop kicks to no effect. Virgil decides to up the ante and dives with a crossbody, but he's caught and front slammed. The catch looked great, but the slam did not. Borger wins with the diving clothesline. For some reason, Ludwig Borger brags about being bilingual, and he stuffs old glory down Virgil's throat. Really impressive build with this character so far. I'm enjoying it. This is a C. Randomly at SummerSlam, Borger cuts a promo insulting Lex Luger over and over again. I say randomly because he won't be his SummerSlam opponent. He laughs that the Lex Express didn't stop at Detroit as he walks his way through crumbling buildings. His English is actually very good. This could work. Match 4, SummerSlam 1993, Marty Jannetty vs Ludwig Borger. A new wrinkle to Borger's story is that he has an amateur boxing career. Turns out this was pretty truthful. Borger dominates the early game with his strikes. New move now as he throws Janetti up into the lights and smacks him in the guts on his way back down. Impressive. Borger keeps going with an overhead choke. So far, his move range is better than expected. Borger misses his corner splash as Janetti tries his comeback but smacked down again. Marty can't manage anything else here and Ludwig puts Janetti in a bear hug as the grease starts to pour out of his roid holes. Janetti gets out the bear hug but shouldn't have bothered because he's crippled with a huge clothesline. Ludwig Borger misses his next punch and the comeback is on. Janetti hits two super kicks to little effect. Janetti is now caught on the dive and front slammed. Punches to the kidney from Borger now. Ludwig applies a torture rack and eventually Marty Janetti taps out. A pretty okay match, but considering this was a pay-per-view, he really only did one extra move. That extra move was really cool though, so it's a C. Match 5, Superstars. Jobber PJ Walker, aka Just Incredible, versus Ludwig Borger. Straight away, Borger choke bombs Credible. Credible somehow looks less goofy at this point of his career. Did his teeth not stop growing or something? Most of this match is punches, but we do get a new move from Borger here. It's the cab driver slam, the cab driver slam, but it's not over. 
Another new move follows that one with Borger hitting a delayed vertical suplex. Ludwig wins with the clothesline. Possibly the most boring match so far. The crowd weren't even reacting and there was a lack of energy in this one. We're apparently still building towards a match with Lex Luger. This match was a D. Match 6, Superstars, Ludwig Borger vs Jobber Sonny Rogers. This Jobber looks like a young Triple H. He also has a really funny way of selling. Borger hits the front suplex, but somehow Borger has been busted open hard. Ludwig misses his splash and the Jobber hits and clotheslines, which Borger no-sells. The Jobber dives now, but Borger catches him with the slam, and he wins with the tap out from the torture rack. Exactly the same as his other matches, but somehow more basic. First S of the run for being a really boring, repetitive encounter. Match 7, Raw. Ludwig Borger vs Phil Apollo. Borger ain't hanging Because it's a new show, we get a new move from Borger with a big side slam. The hairy Apollo just can't get going and he's crippled with a cab driver slam. We also head out the ring for the first time in this run. Borger hits the clothesline on the outside and celebrates with a Finnish fan. A thin fan? Nah, he was a fat fan. Back in the ring, it's time for the delayed vertical suplex. No covers are being made here. Borger hits an elbow drop and lets his opponent up so he can hit some punches to the kidneys. Borger puts on the torture rack for the tap out win. Kind of missing that diving clothesline now. It was better than the last match because it was a bit more varied, it's just a D though. Over on Raw, we get some more build up towards Ludwig Borger and Lex Luger. It's going to be the standard American hero versus anti-American story. It's as old as time. Borger's still turning down a match with him though. I think he's scared. Match 8, Superstars, Ludwig Borger vs Tony Roy who makes the girl say oi. Roy is a man with a big ball of receding hair and he's smacked down in the corner. Eventually Borger hits the choke bomb and argues with the referee. Vertical suplex into an elbow drop. These matches are so repetitive. Just as I say that, Borger nails the throw into the punch to the gut. Someone really needs to pick this move up in 2024. Borger wins with the torture rack. It's a D, just another squash match as he continues on undefeated. How long will it last though? Who's next for him? But before we can find out the answer to that exciting question, a wild slap nuts appears. Double J. It's J E double F. J A double R E double T. Double J. Jeff Jarrett. Yep, yeah, it was right before his next match. I wouldn't mention it otherwise. Shut up or I'll smack you one. Slap nuts is everywhere, even in 1993. Match 9, Raw, Ludwig Borger vs Jobber Hollywood Nova. It's just more of the same, except somehow worse. There's a really dodgy looking choke bomb in this one, and the flapjack looks bad, and it seems to be missing a punch to the gut. Borger does a simple suplex and delayed elbow drop. He's looking a bit unsure at this point for some reason. Borger nails the side slam and makes claims that he will be the next champion. This match does contain the flying clothesline, and boy have I missed that one. It doesn't finish the match because he keeps taking shots at Lex Luger with the torture rack. It's a D. Up next, we've got one of the big matches of this run. Match 10 Superstar Main Event, Ludwig Borger vs Tatanka. The reason this is a pretty huge match for the time is that both men are undefeated. Borger doesn't look impressed though. Ludwig Borger misses his splash much earlier than usual and opens himself up to some chops. Much to his surprise, Tatanka can't clothesline him down, but the third attempt at the clothesline succeeds. Borger pretty much no-sells that one. You really understand the size of Ludwig Borger when you see him stood next to Tatanka, who is not a small man. Tatanka is still struggling to knock him down into the crossbody connects for a two count. The crowd are really into this one. The ref won't let Borger use his punches. He doesn't listen and he hits a giant uppercut to the gut. That one looked insane. No cover is made. This match has really turned now with Borger hitting the side slam. Mr. Fuji marches down to ringside with a flag. Borger hits the delayed suplex and the crowd is almost deafening here. Borger puts on his first submission of this run, which doesn't work, and he's suplexed out of it. Borger quickly shuts it down. I have no idea which way this one's going. Tatanka starts dancing with anger as he hawks up. Borger looks in shock. Tatanka still can't smack him down though. Borger launches him out the ring and over the top rope. Mr. Fuji takes the ref as Borger smashes Tatanka in the back with a steel chair. He has a quick argument with a little kid before rolling Tatanka back into the ring, and Ludwig Borger pins him with one finger, and he has won. Borger is coming for Lex Luger. Huge win for Ludwig Borger, ending someone's undefeated streak. The WWF must be really into this guy. It's a C, it was just missing some moves. It was mostly punching. Variety is the spice of life, like a punch to the gut. Match 11, Raw, the Hellraiser from Helsinki, Ludwig Borger vs Scott Steiner. Okay, you've got my attention. Borger starts out flying through the air and clubbing Scotty before he can even take his coat off. The younger Steiner brother isn't having an easy time here. For the first time, Ludwig Borger climbs to the top rope, and wow, he hits a pretty nice diving clothesline, wasn't expecting that from him. 
No pin is made and this one will carry on. Suddenly Borger ducks too soon and Steiner kills him with a butterfly suplex. Steiner isn't done though and hits a pump handle front slam. It's another match that I can't predict. Borger dumps in his nappy of anger and hides on the outside. Back in the ring now, Borger puts on a headlock's good effect. Unfortunately, it doesn't work, and Scott gets back to his feet and throws Borger overhead for belly to belly. Ludwig looks like he's been a real fight here. He manages to respond now of his diving clothesline, which is just a two count. He does miss his elbow drop, and Stein almost knocks him out of a drop kick to the noggin. The Quebecers come to ringside to remind Borger that he's losing. Back for a mad foot break, and Steiner suplexes Borger back into the ring. Scott Steiner applies the Boston Crab. Borger doesn't really seem like he's going to tap out, and he doesn't, as Borger makes the ropes after a long time. Steiner allows him back to his feet so he can attempt a couple of roll-up pins, but they're just two counts. Ludwig Borger looks like he's starting to suck wind, as Scott Steiner drop kicks him in the head again. Steiner climbs to the top rope and hits a drop kick to the lower region. Another two for Steiner. Finally, Borger manages to retaliate with a power slam for a two count. Ludwig Borger punches Steiner out the ring and he celebrates with happiness. He's busted open again. Borger won't let Scott Steiner back in the ring. Rick Steiner climbs up on the apron and Borger drags him into the ring, but Rick hits a back suplex. Everyone starts fighting as the ref rings the bell. For some reason, this one is recorded as a double DQ, even though Borger was attacked first by Rick Steiner. So I count this one as a Ludwig Borger win, and if you don't agree with that, there's no need to grin. This was a fun watch, but unfortunately it's just a C because Borger didn't do much to Scotty. Match 12, Superstars, Ludwig Borger vs Dan Dubai who makes the girls cry. Not much to say, it's literally the same as the other squash matches, but somehow shorter and more boring. It goes in the zone. Match 13, Survivor Series 1993, 4-4 elimination match, main event. Ludwig Borger, The Mountie, Crush and Yokozuna vs The Undertaker, The Steiner Brothers and Lex Luger. Ludwig doesn't start this out and he isn't seen in this match for a while. He does eventually join this one against Rick Steiner and he nails a jab to the gut. Unfortunately, he has ADD and he's distracted as Steiner takes advantage of a diving axe handle. Borger kicks out and slams Steiner, but he misses his following elbow. Rick Steiner climbs to the top and dives, but this time the catch is botched and Borger just sort of slops him to the mat. Somehow that's a free count and Steiner's eliminated. He's hurt from that one too. Borger's embarrassed and he tags out. The Macho Man, Randy Savage, brawls with Crush on the outside to get him counted out. The anti-American team have the disadvantage. Borger wants to finally fight Lex Luger, but Steiner won't let him. Ludwig Borger takes Steiner down with a rough looking clothesline. New move now from Borger as he actually manages to nail the splash in the corner into a clothesline. Ludwig wants to dive once again which fails as Steiner catches him on the top rope and throws him overhead of a suplex, that was pretty crazy. Yokozuna breaks up the pin and takes Borger's place in the match. Yoko eliminates Steiner with an ass drop. Now Borger will get his hands on Luger which should be a big deal but it doesn't feel like one. Borger keeps smacking him around the ring. Yoko feels like the main character in this match. He brawls with The Undertaker as both men are counted out. Borger hits a leg drop on Luger, which Luger doesn't seem to even react for. The side slam gets Borger a two count and the suplex gets him another two. And the power slam gets him his third two. Luger just keeps getting up. He brocks a suplex and hits one of his own. Both men hit clotheslines for the double down. The evil hill managers distract the ref so that Ludwig Borger can smack Lex Luger with a bucket. That just gets him another two. Luger's fired up now. He hits a DDT, but the crowd aren't even reacting much to Lex Luger. Lex hits a power slam of his own, which isn't enough. But then out of nowhere, Lex hits a charging smack to the head and he puts Ludwig away. Ugh. I mean, it was a huge spot for Borger in this match, but he still didn't feel as important as Yoko or The Undertaker, despite outlasting them all. After several months of build towards Luger and Borger, this should have been something more. And he's been defeated now, but I guess not in singles match, so is he still undefeated? I don't know. On the plus side though, he got an elimination, even if it was a botched one. It's a D. Match 14, Raw Main Event, Ludwig Borger vs Scotty to Naughty. Borger smashes his gut straight away. I'd love to taste something more, but sadly the only highlight is a clothesline which folds Scotty in half. The crowd are in silence. It's good to see the falling uppercut again. The torture rack ends it. It's an S because the crowd were dead for it. Match 15, Superstars, Ludwig Borger vs Jean-Paul who makes the ladies cool. There's really not much to say about this one either. That all the hype has died and he's barely making an effort to interact with the camera anymore. His intrigue has completely vanished. The rack ends it. Shove it in the zone. Match 16, Raw Rematch, Ludwig Borger vs Tatanka. Well, this was alright last time. At least it isn't a jobber match, so I've got some high hopes for this one. Tatanka is ultra aggressive in the early going and he hits 10 smacks to the face. He actually floors Borger in the first 30 seconds. On the outside, Tatanka floors him again when he sends him into the ring post. Back in the ring, Tatanka smacks him in the head again for a third knockdown. 
We haven't seen Borka being manhandled like this in this entire run. Tatanka is in full control but is slow to make a cover. He climbs to the top and nails the crossbody for a two count. Borga finally crashes the tanker with a clothesline. First thing he's managed in this one. Borga hits punches and a splash in the corner. Tatanka no sells it and hawks up. It's not enough and he's power slammed for a two. Borga misses his elbow drop, really back and forth action here. Tatanka eventually gets distracted by Yokozuna at ringside but keeps going and hits a power slam. Mr. Fuji hits Tatanka off the top with his flag. Yoko climbs into the ring and the ref calls for DQ. No way near as good as the last encounter between these two, and once again, Borga just doesn't feel important. It's another shove it. <laughs> Match 17, Superstars main event. Ludwig Borga versus Charles Crystal, who's dressed like a wrestler from the Victorian times. It's not looking good for him either, as he's crushed all over the ring. This match marks the return of the press into the Samoan drop, and I'm still not okay with that. Borga yet again wins with the torture rack, an easy yes. There's no storyline and no reason for any of this to be happening. It's just squash matches and nothing else. Match 18, Raw, Ludwig Borger versus Brad Anderson. No entrance for either guy. It's the same squash match we've seen a thousand times. Well, more like 15 times. The jobber just can't knock Borger down and it only lasts two minutes, just like when you're in bed with your girl. Match 19, Superstars. Can't wait to never hear the Finnish national anthem again. Ludwig Borger versus Tim McNeely. Wow, an actual different start to the match as the jobber dives on him. Sadly, he didn't dive enough and it didn't end the match. We also get the throw into the gut punch. Yeah, I'm really grasping at straws here. It's an ass. What happened next was interesting though. Borger suffered an ankle injury on a house show, which was very unfortunate timing for him. It caused him to miss the Royal Rumble pay-per-view, a scheduled match with Tanker and the Royal Rumble match itself. He did return from that injury, but only for... Match 20, Superstars final match. Ludwig Borger versus Jason Solitaire, who makes the girls care. He smashes into the jobber straight away. Solitaire can't knock him down and his crossbody is caught and he's slammed. Yay, this match has the return of the diving clothesline. Borger slams him again and looks around in disbelief at the crowd. That's right, Borger. Take it all in. Take a long look. You're not going to be here for long. Borger also hits the throw into the air gut punch and he wins with the torture rack. It's a D. For game over. After this, Borger left the WWF for reportedly a number of reasons. Borger was not a liked person backstage and was seen as a bully. He also got caught with steroids in his house, which was at a time when WWF was really scared about their public image. His injury problems were also racking up, and he was racking up a perk addiction too. Borka did alright for himself for a bit after the WWF, doing professional boxing back in Finland, and he also had one fight for the UFC against the debut in Randy Couture, where Borka lost in one minute. His racist stuff is very real though, and he had lots of far-right fans in Finland, a country which kind of falls on both sides of the coin. This far-right stuff led to Borka being elected to Finnish parliament. Whilst he was there, he kept getting in trouble with the law and was known for several homophobic comments. Apparently, he has exit only tattooed on his ass. The trouble continued and Borka eventually slipped into a coma for three weeks, but he did make a return from that. He also did time in prison where more racist stuff surfaced. By 2006, he was out of parliament, but he was not out of trouble. He had severe brain damage and living was a struggle for him. In 2010, he put a gun to his head and ended his life. It's said that his ex-wife did not feel the slightest bit of sorrow at his death. Jim Ross has described Ludwig Borger as a disgusting human, completely untalented, but with a million dollar looks. <sighs> I'm sorry about all that horrible stuff. It's clear that Borger was truly a vile man who also had some severe problems. It's truly remarkable that he seemed competent in a wrestling ring. His offense was pretty decent for this era. He only lost once and was undefeated in singles. After all my research on him, I do feel a bit sick that I've given this man so much praise. But I always try and put other stuff to the side, and I have to be honest, he looked like he belonged in the WWF. He was really intimidating, memorable, and had a decent moveset. I have seen a lot worse from this era, so we can't shove him in the zone for his wrestling ability. We can for his human being ability, though. So Ludwig Borger gets a D for Ring of the Hawks Season 4. I just can't tolerate placing him higher, and if you don't agree with that, you're a liar.